Hey everyone, um, Mr. Mo here. Uh, welcome to another session of Hour of Code. Um, today, again, Hour of Code really is our extension of the National Hour of Code, which happens in December every year. Um, and so we, we wanted to create an opportunity to continue to learn coding or programming uh, beyond December of every year. And, um, and so in a way that we felt was uh, it gives kids a good foundation to then build on and learn uh, programming skills and uh, uh, for their future, okay? And so that's what really our hour of code is intended to do. And uh, we're gonna do that, okay? So um, as usual, during our hour of code sessions, it's really about 20 to 30 minutes of me talking about a coding concept. And then another additional, if you choose 20 to 30 minutes of doing an activity offline or after the broadcast, um, so that you can get a deeper learning uh, experience uh, around what we just talked about, okay? And so that's what we're gonna do today. Have a, a brief presentation that we're gonna go through what we're talking about. Uh, first, we're gonna review, because we have a lot of new members, we're gonna review the first two sessions in case you missed it, and then set up for uh, pretty much what we're gonna do for the entire rest of the year around uh, programming and coding. Um, the first two sessions, we talked a little bit about kind of fundamental coding concepts, and we'll do a little bit more of that today. And then we're gonna, we're gonna set you up, uh, hopefully on a platform that we'll be able to use going into the future um, for all of our coding uh, projects and activities, okay? So let's, uh, let me pull, pull up my screen here. And remember, you can always ask any questions or comments on the right there uh, in the chat box. Uh, and we'll, we'll get those answered for you, okay? All right, so session three is called EduBlocks, and we'll get to what EduBlocks is. Um, Edu is actually short for education and then blocks, okay? Um, so we'll get to that. But first, I, I wanna do a little bit of a review, okay? So remember, in, our, in session one, we talked about what coding is, okay? And if you remember, basically coding or programming, and you can use those words interchangeably, is really just instructions, okay? So we're given either instructions or directions or what I consider to be like a recipe, okay? So just like when you read a recipe, there's ingredients, which is similar to data for like a computer or a robot. And then there are steps in, uh, that tells you what to do with those ingredients, okay? But basically programming is instructions, okay? Uh, we're giving something instructions, whether that's a computer or robot, it could be another human being, but but ultimately, and I want again, this is key. Just remember that when we're talking, when you hear people say learning the code or learning the program, it's really learning to speak the language typically of a robot or a computer so that you can tell it what to do. So we have the block based coding here on the left. And then on the right here is more of the text based coding. And so and this is actually what EduBlocks is going to help us transition between these two, because we have um, we have some young learners and then we have some some more older learner, learners, maybe middle school. Um, and we want to have be able to use a platform going forward that can help both both age groups. Um, so another point of review. So if you remember in our second session, we talked about how a lot of uh, programming is really about taking in inputs, uh, doing some processing or thinking around those things, those inputs and then creating an output, okay? So um, this is really what most programming involves. So if you remember, we were talking about, um, so if you see here in the middle, these are the things that do the processing, okay? So like it could be a computer, it could be a car, humans process things as well. And then, so like an app as well, does some processing, right? But it processes, uh, what you would see here on the left, the inputs, okay? And so, and then after it does the processing, it gives you an output typically on the other end, okay? So for instance, if you were to double tap, if you were to double tap on a picture in Instagram, you it would actually like that picture for you, right? Um, and if you were to add a comment on Instagram, it would increase the comment count. It also increases the like count when you, when you double tap on it, okay? So there are multiple things happening here, but you can kind of see the process flow, right? Um, same thing with human beings. If you put your hot finger on a hot stove, uh, the human will process that. It, it processes very quickly 
and then you tell yourself or your, your hand or your arm to remove that finger so that it's not being burned anymore. Okay, so, and then some processes happen without us even thinking about them. It kind of in the background, and this also happens with computers. So you may eat something that's spoiled, and you may not know that it's spoiled, but your body knows, and it tells your brain uh, in a background process, if you will, without you even consciously thinking about it, and then your body responds by vomiting up <laughs> that um, uh, that bad food that you ate. Okay, so that so that it doesn't harm your body. Okay, so that's an example of like a background process. Okay, which you know, as we get deeper into programming, uh, those those are important as well. Okay, um, so if we if we go down here on the bottom, we we can think about um, some other things that also take takes in inputs. Uh, so like a self driving car. Uh, if, if, if we're riding down the street in a self-driving car and the light turns red, the self-driving car does something. And that's typically uh, would apply the brakes, right? So, and this is where you kind of see how, but it does that based on programming. Whatever somebody has programmed it to do, it will do, okay? Um, so for instance, if we're riding down the street in the same self-driving car and we see that the speed limit increases, and it'll tell the car to actually accelerate or to pick up speed, okay? And then here, a couple more processes here, uploading a file, inputting an equation. Uh, again, the computer does some processing around that and then it, uh, it creates an output, okay? So, so just as a review, those two uh, where we're talking about programming being instructions and then also thinking of programming as inputs and outputs. If you can kind of keep that as like a foundation when you're moving into the harder concepts, um, everything really comes back to this idea of taking some input, doing something with it, and then producing an output, okay? Um, whether that's a number, uh, 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 whether that's uh, telling a robot to move a body part, uh, that's really how, what, how all programming, at least as much as we'll learn, uh, operates, okay? So what is EduBlocks and why have we chosen to use it going forward, okay? So um, typically when young learners are first learning to program, they're introduced to a program called, uh, or a piece of software called Scratch, okay? And this is a browser-based program, meaning that you can get it from the internet, right? Through the web browser. Um, and you can use, it uses these blocks on the side here um, and these are programming blocks, visual programming blocks. And so to program something, you actually just drag in these blocks and snap them together and actually control either your character or you can control a, uh, a micro bit or something like that that controls a robot. OK, so you can use these programming languages like Scratch and they have other ones for young learners as well. Uh, but it's easier to pick up, right, because you're just using pictures. Uh, there's some numbers in here as well, but uh, a lot easier to control your characters using this. And then on the right is what you would see is traditional programming. Um, when most people talk about coding, they're talking about um, Python or, or some other programming language, some text-based programming. So you can see this here on the right. Now you may look at that and say, what is that? What's going on there, right? <laughs> but actually the same thing, uh, it's telling a, pro, uh, a, a piece of software or something else how to actually operate. Same thing is happening over here. It's just that the interface that we use, meaning um, how we communicate with the computer is a little bit different, okay? And so a lot easier on this side here, especially if you're beginning. Uh, on this side here on the right, there's a lot of text. You need to um, uh, memorize what, what all of this text means. What does it do? And then the reason we've chosen EduBlocks is because EduBlocks sits right in between these two, okay? And you'll see that here when we do a quick demonstration. Um, the EduBlocks actually has um, text on blocks, <laughs> which you'll see. So it allows you to actually learn a little bit of Python. And I'll talk briefly about why we've chosen to use Python, which is a programming language. There are many different programming languages, but going forward, I've decided to, to teach Python. Um, and I'll tell you why here shortly. But um, EduBlocks is really just like an intermediate or it sits here in the middle between these two and allows you to transition from the block-based programming to text-based programming a lot easier, okay? Um, and then it'll allow us, again, it's, it, the EduBlocks is based on Python, 
which I think is very important. Okay, so that's what Edgy Blocks is and what it does. And we'll we'll do a quick demo here. So let's uh, let's see if I can uh, let me. Well, first I'll go to uh, I'll go to Scratch here. Okay, so if you've never seen Scratch, if you go to scratch.mit.edu, you can actually start creating from scratch. <laughs> uh, so just click. You don't have to sign up or anything. It just takes you in. It builds your project here, and there's a little even a tutorial you can follow if you want to do that. Okay, but basically you're programming the cat Scratch here to do things. Okay, and I'm not going to go through a lot of this, but you can uh, add sound. You can uh, uh, control it uh, using loops, things of that nature. So uh, we can say, hey, turn 15 degrees uh, on start. Uh, so that's a quick program. So when I click this green flag, it'll turn 15 degrees 10 times, okay? Because it says repeat this block of code 10 times. So let's see. One, two, I think it does it all in one one fell swoop. So there you go. Okay, so you can play around with that. This is actually for learners in like K through three, and then we can go to the edu blocks, which is uh, maybe three and up. Okay, and you, when you first go to edu blocks, which is at app.edublocks.org, it'll ask you to pick a mode. Okay, so you can program a micro bit, you can program a circuit Python, Raspberry Pi. Or you can just uh, select regular Python, and that's what we'll do here. All right, here we go. So now you can see that, all right? So take a look at that program. What do you see? Go ahead and type it on the side. What is this a program of? Can you look at the blocks and, and tell me what that is? Okay, what is this a program doing, telling you to do, or telling the computer to do? That's right. It's good. It's 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 not just say happy birthday, but sing happy birthday, right? Yep. So if now if we go ahead and run this program, let's take a brief look at it, okay? And th and this is the block based side of it, okay? So when we start, we're gonna say we're gonna ask for some input. So you'll see once we run it, the computer will say, "What is your name?" Okay, that's what the input is. We're talking about inputs and outputs, okay? And then uh, in the range between essentially uh, one and two, it'll say happy birthday to you. And then it'll, it'll go back through this loop. This is called a loop. And it'll say it again. It'll say happy birthday to you. So it'll say it twice, right? And there's a sleep. It's just a little pause. In the, and then it'll move on to the next block. And it'll say happy birthday, dear, whatever name we put in. And then happy birthday to you, okay? <laughs> Hopefully you enjoy my singing there, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna run this program and we'll see, okay? We'll put William in, okay? <laughs> All right, so we're running it here. It just says, um, I, don't, I don't know if you can see that part. Can you see that part? The pop-up, yep, yeah. okay. So we'll put William. So what is your name? And then I'll hit enter and then it'll sing happy birthday to William. It won't actually sing it but it'll print it out, okay? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear William. Happy birthday to you, all right? <laughs> so let's run it again. We'll put in a different name. Who wants their name to go in here? Zora, okay, we did William, so let's see Zora. All right, so. Happy birthday, happy birthday, dear Zora. Happy birthday to you. All right. So, <laughs> okay, so here you can kind of see how you can use a program to tell a computer to essentially sing happy birthday to you, right? Now, if we added a voice component to that where the computer could actually uh, speak, speak some words like Alexa does, then you can see how we could program it to speak our name or sing happy birthday to us. Now, this is the block side, and this is and here's where uh, we one of the powerful features of using edu blocks is now we can go over here up into the right hand corner and we can turn it into the Python version, the text base. And so now you can see 
how those blocks that we see here, when, when you turn it into quote unquote actual code, Python code, this is what it looks like, okay? So as you can see, it says name, then it has the input here, what is your name? For this range, say happy birthday, it puts the pause in here, then print is, so that's what it's doing, it's printing to the screen, happy birthday, plus whatever name you put in here from your input above, and then it'll it'll say it again, it'll print it again, okay? So you can kind of see how you go from the blocks um, to the text, okay? And actually these blocks are a little bit different than the ones you see on Scratch because they actually have the text in here. So it says time.sleep and then you put in how many seconds and over here it says time.sleep, okay? So the actual text and that's kind of where uh, EduBlocks is different from Scratch or any other block-based programming. It's really designed to meet uh, young programmers in the middle so that they can go on both sides, okay? So we went through our quick demo. So you say, why EduBlocks? Okay, remember I was saying it bridges the gap, so meaning between like traditional block-based programming and actual text-based programming. And then you can use it really across the board from K through 16, K being kindergarten 16, meaning uh, through college, okay? Um, and then it's Python based. Now, you may be asking why have, uh, of all the programming languages out there, why has Mr. Mo chosen to uh, teach us Python? Uh, and, and it really boils down to this, that uh, Python is the language of artificial intelligence and machine learning, okay? Um, now, what does that mean? That means that, um, uh, well, if you've probably heard of AI or artificial intelligence, it's becoming more and more prominent. Um, uh, they're saying it's like the internet of this generation, okay? So um, most of our computers will be uh, powered by some sort of AI agent. Uh, most of the learning that we do uh, will be machine learning, okay? And then all most of the libraries, which uh, we'll talk about libraries in a future class, most of the libraries are built on Python as the programming language. And so if you're able to really master Python, you'll be properly positioned to be uh, to move into artificial intelligence and machine learning a lot more easily, and so so I chose Python because I think it'll help you in the future as you move on to programming. Um, plus, uh, Python is great for just general tasks like uh, controlling robots or building websites, and so it's a great language across the board, and it's one of the easier languages to learn. Okay, it's more uh, it's um, more tied to how you speak is. Um, it's a lot more, uh, you know, uh, uh, akin, to, akin to the language. So however you speak is usually, uh, when you see a lot of languages, um, it can be confusing because it's not um, written in a way that's easily understandable for new coders, but Python is very understandable. So uh, when will we, <laughs> so yeah, so the coding, we're gonna have a coding exercise that you'll have to do, okay? Um, which is like just some basic coding exercises. So I want you, um, and it, that'll be after this broadcast. So I'll tell you what to do, and then you can go after we log off and go do it, okay? Um, and then um, when we get into future classes, we're gonna actually teach you exactly uh, what to do in terms of programming in Python and using Scratch as well for the younger learners, okay? Um, so, what are you going to do, all right, or your assignment, if you so choose to, <laughs> to accept it? Um, and I'll post this on our website, on Club Oasis. If you go to the Hour of Code class, this will be posted in there. Um, I'll post it tonight after we get off so that you'll have access to it. And then tomorrow after I edit this video, I'll post it there as well so you can rewatch it if you want to, okay? Um, now, you can choose depending on what grade you're in or what level you're comfortable, okay, <laughs> to uh, to do Scratch or you can do uh, ed EduBlocks, okay? So as you can see, if you're in grades K through three or if you're really uncomfortable or, or shy or new to it, then you can use Scratch, okay? So visit Scratch, I uh, showed you that website, and then do the first three uh, coding cards on the PDF, which will be in the in the deeper dive, dive deeper earlier. Okay, below that. Okay, um, and then for grades three and up, if you want to do those same one, two, three 
uh, pro coding cards, you can do that as well, but use uh, edgy blocks instead of scratch. Okay. So um, like once I post to dive deeper on the website, you'll be able to download and open up these coding cards and then just follow the instructions. It tells you exactly what to do. And this will get you more familiar with using scratch or edgy blocks. Okay. Which will help when we actually get into uh, learning uh, uh, deeper programming concepts. Okay. So what are some of the things that we're going to learn here in the future? Okay. So just in wrapping up, okay. Cause we're finishing up here. Um, so we're going to talk about variables and strings, conditionals, and a lot of this won't make sense for you right now. And that's why we're going to learn about it. Loops, functions, otherwise known as methods, data types, and then, um, something called object oriented programming or OOP. Okay. But once we go through all of these and these will be multiple classes. Okay. So learning a program is not something you can just sit down in one day and be a master at. Okay. There's so much to learn. You kind of have to break it up in different sessions. Okay. So make sure um, if you want to become great at programming, you have to do the exercises and you have to be patient. Okay. So I appreciate you guys joining us. So, um, so that's all we have for today. Again, I'm going to post the dive deeper assignment. Um, on the website here in the next half an hour or so. Uh, just follow the instructions there. But this assignment is really just to get you used to using either, either Scratch or EduBlocks, okay? And then the next session, we'll get into actually learning about uh, probably variables and strings. And if you're into algebra or anything, you probably already know what a variable is. But these things will allow us to step and get stronger and stronger in programming Python as we go along. Okay. Um, and again, it's not something that you can pick up overnight, but if you stick with me and, and join us on every session or at least watch the videos afterwards and do the exercises, you'll be prepared and positioned to be a great programmer in the future. Okay. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you got some value out of that. Remember it's not going to happen overnight, but if you tune in regularly, if you ask questions on the site, if you want resources, we're there to help you and appreciate you joining us. Uh, there's a lot of activity going on over there. I appreciate you guys, William, Anthony, Zora, and uh, I think Mackenzie's on the line as well and a few others. So I appreciate you. Hopefully you got some value out of this and uh, I'll see you in the next video.